So I guess we need to talk about the Bound for Glory series. It, it was this weird points-based tournament that went over a four-month period and involved matches on television, on a pay-per-view, and at house shows. Okay, um, you know, people complain about how complicated the King of the Mountain match was. People complain about the inverted battle royals that TNA would run, uh, the fight for the right where you'd have to fight to get into the ring and then you'd have a battle royal to kick people out of the ring and whoever was left in the ring would be the number one contender or whatever. Um, you know, people complain about Feast or Fire and they don't away with all those concepts. Hogan and Bischoff did away with the inverted battle royal, with King of the Mountain, and with Feast or Fire. Give them credit. They, they did away with these, these concept matches that were not popular. Um, I think it was a mistake to get rid of King of the Mountain. I liked King of the Mountain. I think King of the Mountain was an interesting match. Other people disagree. Okay, whatever. But to Hogan and Bischoff's credit, they did away with King of the Mountain. So, they decide instead to have this convoluted four-month points-based sort of round-robin tournament with no rhyme or reason whatsoever. And they set up four people. They set up four people who could have potentially won this, this uh, tournament, if you will, uh, through the course of the tournament. And one of them was Crimson. Crimson who had an undefeated streak. Okay. That's pretty simple. He has an undefeated streak. You know, if, if the guy can't lose, then the guy could probably win the series, right? Okay, the second one is Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam basically becomes a favorite to win the series once TNA announces that Bound for Glory is going to take place in Philadelphia. Philadelphia being the home of ECW, Rob Van Dam being one of ECW's biggest stars ever, it kind of makes sense. Okay, the third one they set up is Bully Ray. And this happens later on in the tournament. This happens when you kind of start realizing, you know, they're, they're trying to bullshit their way out of Crimson. They're going to injure him or take him out or something. And you have this sort of dark horse lying in the background right, waiting to swoop in once Crimson is out of the picture. And that's Bully Ray. Okay. Also, very good story. And the fourth one, the fourth one was Samoa Joe. Now, a lot of you who actually watch this show are like, how the, hell, how the hell did they set up Samoa Joe to win the Battle for Glory series? Well, they didn't really set him up to win. See, Samoa Joe has been on a losing streak since, like, lockdown. And Samoa Joe would find, like, new and creative ways to lose. He would try to go for a submission, but then get rolled up. He would get a submission, he'd get the win, but then he wouldn't let go of it, so the decision was reversed and Samoa Joe would lose. You know, Samoa Joe was minus 10 points at the end of this series, okay? Samoa Joe had negative points. Samoa Joe was so pissed off at the entire concept of the series that he vowed he was going to break, literally break, every man in the tournament until he was the only one left. Therefore, he would be the only one eligible to get the Bound for Glory world title shot. So Samoa Joe's logic is, well, okay, if I injure everyone in the series, I'm the only one left, I'm going to win. Well, Samoa Joe really only injures like two people. And then they kind of drop it and he feuds with Crimson. He is the guy that takes out Crimson, I'll give him that. Samoa Joe takes out Crimson, he takes out Devon, he takes out the Pulp. And I think that's about it. I, I, and then, you know, he feuds with Crimson and Matt Morgan for some reason. The guy that ends up winning the Battle for Glory series turns out to be Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode, half of a tag team with really no bill. I mean, Bobby Roode at the first half of this tournament was injured. You know, I mean, the people thought he was going to have to be out of the tournament because he had, he had an elbow injury. He was not. He wasn't able to compete. He wasn't able to defend the tag team titles. James Storm had to defend the tag team titles with, you know, fucking Alex Shelley because they weren't able to defend the titles because Bobby Roode was hurt. But yet, Bobby Roode wins the tournament. Okay, Bobby Roode wins the tournament. And this is kind of the big ugh, part that I think a lot of people had with this year in TNA. Bobby Roode wins the Bound for Glory series. And there's a six week build between No Surrender 
and Bound for Glory, where they build up Bobby Roode like he's the second fucking coming. Like he is the greatest thing since sliced. Basically, Bobby Roode is the underdog going in against the Olympic champion. He's been fighting his entire life. They build him and build him and build him and build him and build him. And you people, TNA fans, actually believed that TNA was going to have Bobby Roode win the world title. I'd like to tell you right now that if you honestly thought Bobby Roode was going to win a bound for glory, you're an idiot. And you know nothing about TNA. I mean, you, you really... Nothing that this company has done in the last two years should have put any faith in you at all that Bobby Roode was going to win this fucking title. But you did. You believed it. You bought it. So Bound for Glory comes, and obviously, Bobby Roode loses. And everybody's upset. Like, How dare they? They built this up. Oh, they made a big mistake. Oh, well, they probably did, but did you really think they were going to put the world title on Bobby Roode and fucking Bound for Glory? The fuck is wrong with you people? This is TNA. They have Jeff Hardy under fucking contract as we speak, despite showing up to Victory Road in no condition to come to compete as the world champion in the main event. Public embarrassment on the level of which TNA was forced to put out a public apology, refunds, and free access to their fucking on-demand service to anyone who bought the fucking show. Jeff Hardy still has a fucking job. You really thought, you, you suppose, supposedly smart wrestling fans, Thought Bobby Roode was gonna win the fucking world title bound for glory. Seriously? You're a moron! We're all idiots! We're all idiots because we watch this fucking show! And you know why we're idiots for watching this fucking show? Because you see, TNA knows that they got us. They knew that they're like, yeah, we really got these smart marks by the balls! Because we made him believe that Bobby Roode was going to be the world champion, and we took it from him. And now we're going to fuck with him. Because here's what they do after Bound for Ha ha, we got you, Smart Marks. It gets worse. Three weeks later, Bobby Roode versus James Storm. On television. On who three weeks ago was the greatest thing since sliced bread, the most popular baby face TNA has made in two years, the one that every single one of you that actually were dumb enough, dumb enough to think that Bobby Roode was not going to be the next Barry Window. Wanted to see B. Kurt Angle, the one that you guys love so much, the one that you had so much passion for when he lost. Bobby Roode turns heel. Turns heel! He's a bad guy now. He's a world champion. He takes out his own partner. He's the leader of the selfish generation. Oh, and, and, and just to and, and just, uh, make things worse, James Storm isn't even gone for like two weeks after getting hit in the head. And he's now feuding with Kurt Angle. He's not even trying to get back at Bobby Roode for stealing his world title. He's feuding with Kurt Angle. He's not even trying to get back at his old partner. And, and people wonder why I don't want to fucking review this show. People wonder why I don't want to touch this show. Why I don't want to talk about this show. Why Corey Letson is now doing this week in TNA on World Wrestling People wonder why I hate this show this much. People wonder why the anger of this fucking video exists. I'll tell you something. I, I This is why. Because this company, it does nothing but fuck with you. It, it's not trying to entertain you. It's not trying to, you know, make you happy or give you something or, you know, present a show that entertains it enriches your life. It, 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 they're just trying to fuck with you. They're trying to fuck with you, and I don't know why I spend so much. I, I, I have spent so much time 
covering their, their products, talking about them, discussing them. You know, I don't want to talk about TNA. I don't even know why I'm doing this fucking video, except possibly to vent, to explain to you why this company doesn't fucking deserve one ounce, one ounce of your attention. But yet, you don't give it to me. Because they're the so-called number two company in the fucking world right now. And people will bitch in the comments sections, on Facebook, on Twitter. Well, if you hate TNA so much, why don't you start writing about it? Well, because we didn't have somebody else to write about it. You see, it's a thing called supply and demand. You know, it's like anything else, okay? The reason why sites like WorldWrestlingInsanity.com cover TNA is because the dumbasses like you you keep clicking on these fucking links, keep reading the fucking coverage. Oh, oh, TNA, they're so fucking stupid. You keep tuning into the show and you keep treating this company like it's an actual number two. You keep treating this company as if it's some fucking competition to WWE. What's the word in this fucking link? People leave WWE and come to TNA to die. Okay? And people come from the independents to TNA praying praying that they'll get to WWE or, you know, at least make a name so when they are forced back on the indie circuit, you know, that they come to TNA to try to make ends meet. Fucking Austin Aries went to Impact Wrestling because he, 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 you know, for the money, the money. You know, guys, I mean, people on the independents can't even fucking make a living. So they go to Impact praying, praying that they'll make enough money to be able to pay their fucking bills. TNA sucks. And we all know it. You know, some of us watch it for the sheer morbid curiosity of, wow, how bad is this going to get? You know what? I'm, I don't want to watch a bad wrestling show. I watch good wrestling shows. I, I run away from TNA Impact screaming to my fucking DVD collection. To whatever Shimmer and to Ring of Honor and Dragon Gate and Evolve and, you know. And I run away screaming to watch these other shows and, and I... And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of, of, of giving this show any press.